Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God, back with you with the next video in my series reading The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn as read by Lord Naren White. Without further ado, returning to The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. For the land's sake, what is the matter with the child? He's got the brain fever as sure as you're born, and they're oozing out. And everybody runs to see, and she snatches off my hat. And out comes the bread and what was left of the butter. And she grabbed me and hugged me and says, Oh, what a turn you did give me, and how glad and grateful I am. It ain't no worse, for luck's against us, and it never rains but it pours. And when I see that truck, I thought we lost you, for I know the color. And I, and all it was just like your brains would be if, dear, dear. Why didn't you tell me what was what you'd been down there for? I wouldn't have cared. Now clear out to bed, and don't let me see no more for you till morning. I was upstairs in a second, and down the lightning rod in another one, and in shinning through the dark for the lean to. I couldn't hardly get my words out. I was so anxious, but I told Thomas, quick as I could, we must jump for it now, and not a minute to lose. The house full of men, yonder with guns, his eyes just blazed, and he says, No, is that so? Ain't it bully? Why, Huck, if it was to do over again, I bet I could fetch two hundred, if we could put it off till. Hurry, hurry, I says. Where's Jim? Right at your elbow. If you reach out your arm, you can touch him. He's dressed and everything's ready. Now we'll slide out and give the sheep signal. But then we heard the tramp of men coming to the door and heard them begin to fumble with the padlock and heard a man say, I told you it would be too soon. They haven't come. The door is locked. Here, I'll lock some of you into the cabin and you lay for them in the dark and kill them when they come and the rest scatter around a piece and listen if you can hear them coming. So in they come, but couldn't see us in the dark and most trod on us whilst we was getting, whilst we was hustling to get under the bed. But we got under all right, and out through the hole swift but soft, Jim first, me next, and Tom last, which was according to Tom's orders. Now we was in the lean too, and heard the trampings close it by outside. So we crept to the door, and Tom stopped us there, put his eye to the crack, but couldn't make out nothing. It was so dark and whispered, and said he would listen for the steps to get further. When he nudged us, Jim must glide out first and him last. So he set his ear to the crack and listened and listened and listened. And the steps are scraping around out there all the time. And at last he nudged us and we slid out and stooped down, not breathing and not making the least noise. And slipped stealthy towards the fence in an engine file. And got to it all right. And me and Jim over it. But Tom's breeches catch fast on a splinter on the top rail. And then he heard, he heard the steps coming, so he had to pull loose, which snapped the splinter and made a noise. And as he dropped in our tracks and started, somebody sings out, Who's that? Answer or I'll shoot. But we didn't answer. We just unfurled our heels and shouted. Then there was a rush and a bang, bang, bang. And the bullets fairly whizzed around us. We heard them sing out. Here they are. They've broke for the river. After them, boys and turn loose the dogs. So here they come, full tilt. We could hear them because they wore boots and yelled, but we didn't wear no boots and didn't yell. We was in the path to the mill, and when they got pretty close onto us, we dodged into the bush and let them go by, and then dropped in behind them. They had all the dogs shut up, so they wouldn't scare off the robbers, but by this time somebody had let them loose. And here they come, making pow-wow enough for a million. But they was our dogs, so we stopped in our tracks till they catched up. And when they see it, it weren't nobody but us, and no excitement to offer them. They only just said howdy, and tore right ahead towards the shouting and clattering, and then we up steam again and whizzed along after them till we was nearly to the mill, and then struck up through the bush where my canoe was tied, and hopped in and pulled for dear life towards the middle of the river but didn't make no more noise than we was obliged to. And we struck out, easy and comfortable, for the island where my raft was, 
and we could hear them yelling and barking at each other all up and down the bank till we were so far away the sounds got dim and died out. And when we stepped onto the raft, I says, Now, old Jim, you're a free man again, and I bet you won't ever be a slave no more. And a mighty good job it was too, Huck. It is planned beautiful, and it is done beautiful. And there ain't nobody can up a plan that's no more mixed up and splendid than who what that one was. We was all glad as we could be, but Tom was the gladdest of all because he had a bullet in the calf of his leg. When me and Jim heard that we didn't feel so brash as what we did before, it was hurting him considerable and bleeding, so we laid him in the wigwam and tore up one of the duke's shirts for to bandage him. But he says, Give me the rags. I can do it myself. Oh, sorry, this, this is Tom. Give me the rags. I can do it myself. Don't stop now. Don't fool around here. And the evasion booming along so handsome. Man the sweeps and set her loose. Boys, we done it elegant. Deed we have. I wish we'd a handling of Louis the Sixteenth. There wouldn't have been no son of St. Louis ascend to heaven. Wrote down his biography, no, sir. We'd have whooped him over the border. That's what we'd have done with him. And done it just as slick as nothing at all, too. Man the sweeps, man the sweeps. But me and Jim was consulting and thinking. And after we thought a minute, I says, Say it, Jim. So he says, Well, then, this is the way it looked to me. Huck, if it was him that us being set free, and one of the boys was going to get shot, would he say, Go on and save me? Never mind, but a doctor too. For to save this one. Is that like Mars, Tom Sawyer? Would he say that? You bet he wouldn't. Well then, is Jim going to say it? No, sir. I don't budge a step out of this place without a doctor. Not if it's 40 years. I knowed he was white inside, and I reckoned he'd say what he did say. So it was all right now. And I told Nooper I was... I, I told Tom I was a going for a doctor. He raised considerable row about it. But me and Jim stuck to it and wouldn't budge. So he was cr cr for crawling out and setting the raft loose himself. But we wouldn't let him. Then he gave us a piece of his mind, but it didn't do no good. So when he sees me getting the canoe ready, he says, Well then, if you're bound to go, I'll tell you the way to do when you get to the village. Shut the door and blindfold the doctor tight and fast and make him swear to be silent as the grave, and put a purse of gold in his hand, and then take and lead him all around the back alleys and everywhere in the dark, and then fetch him here in the canoe in a roundabout way amongst the islands, and search him and take his chalk away from him, and don't give it back to him till you get him back to the village, or else he will chalk this raft so he can find it again. It's the way they all do. So I said, and so I said I would, and left. And Jim was able to hide in the woods when he see the doctor coming till he was gone again. Chapter 41 The doctor was an old man, a very nice, kind-looking old man when I got him up. I told him and my brother was over on Spanish Island hunting yesterday afternoon, and camped on a piece of a, ra on a, of a raft we found, and about midnight he must have kicked his gun in his dreams. For it went off and shot him in the leg, and we wanted him to go over there and fix it, and not say nothing about it. <sighs> Nor let anybody know, because we wanted to come home this evening and surprise the folks. Who is your folks, he says. The Phelps is down yonder. Oh, he says. And after a minute, he says. How'd you say he got shot? He had a dream, I says. And it shot him. Singular dream, he says. So he lit up this lantern and got his saddlebags and we started. But when he sees the canoe, he didn't like the look of her. Said she was big enough for one, but didn't look pretty safe for two. I says, oh, you needn't be afeard, sir. She carried the three of us easy enough. What three? Why, me and Sid and, and the guns, that's what I mean. Oh, he says. And we'll go ahead and stop there for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.
please like, comment, and subscribe, as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.